What up guys, Jack Knight here, and tonight is a reaction video. We are going to be watching 10 craziest last meal requests from inmates on death row. So, let's get to it. That was a good crack. Philip Ray Workman was an ex-con and drug addict who held up a Wendy's restaurant at gunpoint. Police officers arrived quickly, responding to the silent alarm. As Mr. Workman fled, he allegedly shot and killed one of the officers. He would sit on death row for 25 years. During his last days before his execution, Workman asked for vegetarian pizzas to be delivered to the homeless. Prison officials denied this request, and as a result, what? Workman went on a three-day hunger strike. During that time, people all around the country sent veggie pizzas to homeless shelters in Tennessee to show their support for his seemingly selfless cause. Wow. That's nice. James though. Edward Smith was a former voodoo priest and tarot card reader in the Houston, Texas area. He robbed a second floor insurance office where he saw a clerk counting money behind a window. During the robbery, he shot and killed one of the insurance agents. In prison, the 37-year-old was asked what he wanted for his last meal. He asked for radakunda dirt, which is often associated with voodoo rituals. He explained he would use it to mark his body so that the spirit would move on and not become a ghost. After this request was refused, he then settled on a cup of yogurt. 32-year-old <laughs> Thomas Grasso was responsible for a string of home invasions that resulted in the strangulation deaths of two elderly people, one in Oklahoma oh. and another in New York. Once investigators caught up to him, he confessed to both murders and was sentenced to death. His extravagant last meal consisted of 24 mussels and clams, a Burger King double cheeseburger, six barbecue spare ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, a pumpkin pie with whipped cream, and a can of room temperature SpaghettiOs. His very last words were, I did not get my SpaghettiOs. I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Ha! <laughs> Lawrence Russell Brewer and two other white men kidnapped a 49-year-old black man in 1998. They chained him by the ankles to the back of a pickup truck and dragged him for three and a half miles down a country road near Jasper, Texas. The man died when he was decapitated after hitting a drainage pipe. Brewer's last meal was a pretty huge spread. He ordered chicken fried steaks with onions and gravy, a triple cheeseburger, a large omelet, fried okra, half a loaf of bread, a pound of a barbecue, a meat lover's pizza, three fully loaded fajitas, three cans of soda, peanut butter fudge, and a pint of ice cream. When the whole meal was brought to Brewer, he refused to take a single bite, stating that he was not hungry. After this little stunt, Texas ended the last meal request immediately. What? John Wayne Gacy, Way to ruin it for everyone the else. Clown, was a serial rapist and murderer in Chicago during the 1970s. Gacy would dress up as Pogo the Clown at charitable events, parades, and children's parties. He would lure young teenage boys to his home and strangle them to death after raping them. 23 of his victims were found under the crawl space of his home. His final meal included a dozen deep-fried shrimp, french fries, a pound of strawberries, and a bucket of original recipe chicken from KFC. Before being convicted of his crimes, Gacy was a manager at three different KFCs. <coughs> really? Robert Buell was convicted of the kidnapping, raping, and killing of an 11-year-old girl in 1982. Although he hello. admits to abducting the girl from the park, he denies his involvement in the murder. Her body was found a week after her disappearance, strangled, sexually attacked, burned by candles, and scrubbed Burned green. by candles? Buell's last meal was a single black olive with the pit still inside. He did this in homage to Robert Figure, who in 1963 chose one unpitted olive as his last meal as well. The hope here is that once in the ground, the seed from the olive will sprout and grow from the grave. 
Gerald Lee Mitchell was 17 at the time of his crimes of murder and theft. He first murdered a man during a drug deal. He stole the man's car and shot him with a sawed-off shotgun. Only a week later, he shot another man over a necklace. He was caught by Texas police while driving around in the slain victim's car. When asked what he wanted to eat for his final meal, he said all he wanted was an assorted bag of Jolly Rancher candies. He was granted his request, and he ate all of them. Peter J. Menil was responsible for beating and stabbing a man to death. He was pretending to sell him some cocaine, but he in fact intended to rob the man. He hit the victim in the head with a heavy glass beer mug. He then stabbed him 39 times in the neck. 39 times? With an automobile shock absorber. His last meal was one of the largest ever compiled together. Prison officials brought 20 beef tacos, 20 beef enchiladas, two double cheeseburgers, a pizza with jalapenos, fried chicken, spaghetti, a small fruit cake, half of a chocolate cake, half of a vanilla cake, cookies and cream ice cream, caramel pecan fudge ice cream, two coca colas, <laughs> two pepsi colas, two root beers, and two orange juices. Damn! Ronnie Lee Gardner hungry. was sentenced to life in prison for the death of Melvin John Otterstrom during a robbery. He was then sentenced to death for the 1985 killing of attorney Michael Burdell during an unsuccessful escape from a Salt Lake City courthouse. Gardner ate a last meal of steak, lobster tail, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, and 7-Up. But the crazy part about his request is that he wanted to watch the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy while eating his meal. Three yeah, days later, Lord he was Rings. executed by a firing squad at his own request. He requested this because he knew there would be no mistakes. He got that right. In 1981, Ricky Ray Rector shot and killed a man in a nightclub, and then a police officer in Conway, Arkansas. Realizing there was no way out, he turned the gun to his temple and pulled the trigger. Ricky Ray shot himself in the head, but he did not die. He in fact gave himself a lobotomy, rendering himself mentally challenged. Therapists would conclude that his IQ would be measured at around 70 during his last days on death row. Prison officials asked him what he wanted to eat before dying. He asked for steak, chicken, cherry-flavored Kool-Aid, and a full pecan pie. It seemed that Ricky did not understand that he was being put to death, because he left the pecan pie on the side of the tray. He told the guards who came to take him to the execution chamber that he was saving it for later. <laughs> wow. Some of those were pretty crazy. You know, and, like, for one, um, the guy who ordered all of that in Texas and refused to take a bite, said he wasn't hungry. Okay, so, like, just because of that, they end the last meal request for anybody, all inmates on death row? Really? Like, you're going to let this fucking asshole ruin it for everybody? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Man, and ugh, I got hungry listening to all this. But wow. I mean, I mean, ordering that much food, requesting one thing, 20, 20 beef tacos and all of that crap. I mean, hey, why worry about cholesterol or heart attack anyway? You're going to be put to death. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Um... Yeah, I'll see you next time. Later.